Going over every NFC team's wants, needs, and desires when it comes to this offseason and coming up with the draft and free agent fit for those teams. But if you didn't know, now you know I did the AFC yesterday. So check that video out after this one. Let's go ahead and get this sucker started with the NFC East. We got the Cowboys here as I have left tackle, running back, and center as their top needs available here with uh honestly left tackle the only left tackle they have on the roster right now is uh matt w here out of uh what was it north dakota right but uh yeah they probably should look to address that position whether it's re-signing teron smith which is what i got there Teron smith or drafting one uh at the back end of the first round which could be tyler guyton could be. Don't know if he's necessarily left there, but I imagine a combination of him or a Marius Mims will be available at that pick. So I think those are two ways they could address it. Look at the Cowboys' current cap space. They're only $3 million over the cap currently, which they could probably restructure some things to get under there. But look at a running back. They only have Deuce Vaughn available uh, going into next year or Deuce Vaughn on the roster going into next year. So, yeah, they're going to have to get some guys there. Uh, Gus Edwards could be a very inexpensive option if they want to go the free agent route and not bring back uh, Tony Pollard. Jonathan Brooks, one that's widely talked about as a potential third rounder. Going to the Cowboys. Uh, his surgery was done by the Cowboys medical staff. So, there's some ties there. There's, there's some dots you can connect. So, there's that. Center, obviously, with Tyler Biotish. Going, uh, going to into free agency this year. I'm a big fan of actually Brock Hoffman when he was coming out of Virginia Tech, but I don't know if he's ready for this moment or if the moment might be too big for him. We, he's just kind of an unknown right now. So they could go again with an, a, a cheap alternative being like an Evan Brown. You could also talk about maybe in the third round, like a Bo Limmer. I'm a big fan of Bo Limmer there, but I don't think they bring back uh, Biotish either though. Uh, going to the Giants, I got guard, corner, and running back. To be fair, with corner, they have Deontay Banks, but I think they would love a corner opposite of him because Cordero Flott is kind of, they kind of see him as the uh, the slot, the heir apparent there. Not heir apparent, but the, their future slot corner there. So I think maybe they could make a splash. If uh, a guy like Legereus Sneed hits free agency, throw all the money at him. And make the Chiefs, if they really want him, they got to spend a pretty penny. Now, Giants, in terms of cap space this offseason, uh, I think they're actually in a decent situation. Where are the Giants? Here they are. They're Yeah, they're $39 million above the cap. So they could they could break the bank for uh, a, a, a player or two. Or they could go maybe early second round. You could get like a Eunice, uh, Ennis, Rakestraw Jr. So there's a couple options there. Again, we're looking for Deontay Banks's running mate there. Now, guard, Mark Lewinsky. He, he, he's probably the best guard you got currently on the roster, unfortunately. Uh, you got a pair of guys from North Carolina there. Kind of unknowns. They haven't seen a lot of playing time because of injury and such. So, again, we can make that big splash by grabbing Michael Lawainu from the Chiefs, or from the Chiefs, <laughs> from the uh, Patriots. That would be a big splash for the Giants. Uh, we could go to the third round with, like, a Zach Zittner. Again, this is probably, be a, like, a later third, because I think they have a later third round pick. But I really like that. If they can make those two big, those are kind of real big additions, Michael Wainu. The best thing about Wainu is he could also play tackle. So if, the, if Evan Neal is still just crapping bricks, man, you could bench him and move Michael Wainu to that right tackle spot where he proved he was very good. Maybe give Evan Neal a shot there at guard. And then obviously they got the Saquon Barkley thing going on right now. And, uh,. It sounds like they're going to make an attempt to re-sign him and whatnot. They're going to have talks, some uh, contract negotiations. I don't know if that will work out, but currently the only their, their best running back probably under a contract is Gary Brightwell. You can make a uh, you can, you can make a case for Eric uh, 
Bray. But I got Brightwell's top guy there. Regardless, they need to do something about the position. We could talk about like in the fourth round because they just have more valuable needs. You might as well swing on running back if you don't bring back Saquon in day three. You could swing on it a couple of times if you really want. Marshawn Lloyd's a guy that ha he's twitched up, has really good upside, moves well, takes contact relatively well. It's just fumbles, drops. They're kind of, kind of big, man. So th that's a big reason why I'm not as high on him as uh, some other people are. Going to the Eagles, we got running back corner and linebacker is what I think the biggest needs are for them. Currently at running back, Kenneth Gainwell is the top guy on the roster. Th they've been a team that is, I feel like, they have budgeted well at running back, like going out, get in like a DeAndre Sweat, bring it in, Rashad Penny after a couple, like a couple of season injuries. I mean, like, hey, we know you're a good player when you can stay healthy. So, hop on, got a good deal out of him. Uh, even though it was again Swift that mainly saw the uh, the lion's share there. So they can maybe do something similar with like a DK Dobbins coming off two like back to back ACL injuries. So, yeah, they could probably get him relatively cheap on a one-year deal and honestly make the most out of it like they did with DeAndre Swift. Uh, they could. I, I like the idea of them drafting Trey Benson because I think he's just a freaking stud. But they really don't have to do that because, honestly, their philosophy is, hey, we could get a runner, like, running back cheap, so let's just bring in some guys. Like, last time they drafted a guy highly was Miles. Sanders. That was like, what, four or five years ago? So I don't know if they'd do it again. Then, uh, of course, Darius Slay, James Bradbury. Those are guys that probably you need to find those air appearance. So like Nate Wiggins would make a ton of sense in the first round. I think corner is kind of a, not a guaranteed, but it's one of the most likely things they could do in the first round. Uh, this season, if they want to go the free agent route, uh, Kendall Fuller would kind of be a fun guy for the Vic Fangio defense there. And I mean, it's kind of a, kind of a big splash. It's going to be one that requires, you know, a little little moolah. And of course, linebacker Nicobe Dean just can't stay healthy. Maybe they make a splash with like Frankie Luvu in free agency or in the second round. They go with Edwin Cooper. They, they have a chance to be the first team to take a linebacker. I don't think linebacker goes in the first round, but I think there's a good chance it was in the second round. And they grab Edwin Cooper, a guy who is a great athlete, great length, just flies around the field. Pairing up with uh, N'Kobe Dean there. All right, move into the Commanders, final team in the NFC East here. Because I got edge, corner, and center as their top needs. I mean, you could list the whole offensive line, but they have yet to cut Leno. They've yet to cut Wiley. So we'll see what exactly they do with the offensive line there. But... Uh, KJ Henry is their top edge rusher going into next season. Make a play for Brian Burns. If they if the Panthers don't franchise tag him, then make the Panthers or any team that wants to come his way have to pay top dollar. Listen, the Commanders currently they have 96 million available in cap space. Let me refresh just to yes, 96 million available in cap space. Drop the bucket of cash. For Brian Burns, is he worth it? Ah, you kind of got to kind of hope that he takes that next step into elite. He's just like kind of like what Josh Allen did this past season with the Jags. Uh, like Brian Burns has been consistent, 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 but he hasn't had like that true breakout season to where it's like, oh, this guy's like a top edge in the in the NFL. So they could do that. They could go second round, maybe get lucky on Chop Robinson. They want to go with the twitched up athlete. Uh, looking at corner, Manuel Forbes is kind of their top guy. You can make a case for Benjamin St. Jude's, but they like using him in the slot. So maybe Dan Quinn wants to bring on a uh, Stefan Gilmore. Be like, hey, yeah, we're kind of in a little bit of a rebuild, but we got some talent on this team. Uh, and we would love to have a veteran come in and just kind of give us some consistency. I don't know if Gilmore probably ring chasing at this point in his career. I don't know if that's a move he would want to do. 
But I thought I'd at least, you know, bring up the idea. Kool-Aid McKinstry could be a, a good get in the second round if he falls out of the first. And then, I again, I talked about they could go tackle in a variety of different ways. But again, they currently still have their, their starters from last year on the roster. And they're kind of expensive. So I'm going to go with center, which Nick Gates kind of played guard uh, a large part of the year. But... They could go with maybe a Tyler Biotish, a guy Dan Quinn's familiar with. Or I like in the fourth round, Hunter Norzad out of Penn State. Finally, people are starting to talk about this guy. Like, the dude had a really good uh, uh, Shrine Bowl and put him on my radar. I pu I pushed him up. I think he he's in my top 150. And now you got people really talking about him. So... Watch out, man. Maybe people will push him to the moon. Listen, I know you love the NFL draft as much as I do, and you're going to want a nice, hefty watch list of players during this college football season. Well, go ahead. Check out my draft guide. You can purchase it for only 30 bucks by Venmoing or PayPaling me. Link's in the description. It's a one-time payment, and you get it for this whole draft cycle and forever and always, technically. It's a Google spreadsheet, so send me your email when you send the payment. I'll get you hooked up. You will see my current prospect rankings and big board, my full evals. And guess what? It updates throughout the whole draft cycle. So it's a great purchase. And it's a great way to support the channel. Maybe he won't even be a guy available in the fourth round. But let's move to the NFC North with the Chicago uh, Bears. As I have uh, center, wide receiver, and edge as the top needs for this team. Uh, they have nobody at center after releasing Cody Whitehair, which honestly was kind of the correct move. But hey, the Bears, they got some money. They got $80 million in cap space. Go out and go after Lloyd Cushenberry. If he doesn't get tagged, then yeah, drop the bank. Get a good center. You haven't had a good center in quite some time. Uh, they could also get like a Cedric Van Pran maybe in the third round. Could also be an option there. Uh, you got DJ Moore, but he needs a running mate. Darnell Mooney is a free agent, so they could bring in maybe a Calvin Ridley. Throw a pretty little petty at him and hoping he's a better number two than he is number one. Uh, they could, uh, one of my favorites is draft Roma Dunze or maybe even Malik Neighbors, depending on whose mock draft you're looking. One of those guys fall at nine. That is just such a fun pick to have in the first round. So pairing that up with DJ Moore and obviously what I suspect to be your franchise quarterback, Caleb Williams, though. Nothing set in stone. We're about to start the offseason. We're going to see where the Bears exactly will be heading here. And then uh, Edge, Montez Sweat doesn't really have a true running mate there. So like going out and grabbing maybe a Daniel Hunter would be really fun. Or drafting, and I've been saying this for a long time, when guys like Roma Dunze aren't on the board at pick nine, it just makes so much sense going with like Jared Verse, who feels like a really natural fit for Matt Eberflus's scheme there. But uh, uh, you could also mention safety here as uh, they had to uh, release Eddie Jackson. I wonder if he might be back, though, on just uh, a lower contract. But we'll see. We'll see. All right. We're going to move the Detroit Lions. Because I have corner, edge, and guard as their top needs. Uh, looking at corner, Cameron Sutton. We didn't have a, exactly a great year, but to be fair, that secondary wasn't that good in general, mainly the core position, obviously. But grabbing more guys definitely it would be helpful. Get, grabbing a guy like Sean Murphy Button, who's kind of coming off. He was on a one-year prove-it deal, got banged up, but played well when, when healthy for the Titans. Probably be looking for another one-year prove-it deal, which the Lions can definitely do currently. They have a ton of cast space at $65 million. They could also draft maybe a, a Ennis Rakestraw Jr. in the first round at the back end of that first. That's definitely a possibility when it comes to uh, the edge position. They have Aiden Hutchinson, but they need a running mate, whether it's like uh, an upgrade over John Kaminsky or maybe even an upgrade over James Houston, who unfortunately was hurt most of the year this past season. They could sign Bryce Huff, who has been very, very productive mainly as a designated pass rush only player 
for the Jets. So they can bring him over because the Lions, they've shown they have that role. When James Houston got hurt, they had nobody that could really fill that role. Or they could go Darius Robinson, who would be more closer to what they asked James Kaminsky to do there, or Josh Pascal. So you got options there. And then guard Kobe Swordsdale currently is the top guy there on the roster with with Big Daddy V and uh, got Jonah Jackson, uh, Glasgow, all those guys hidden free agency. Swordsdale, who we saw quite a bit for, you know what performed how you would expect a day three rookie to perform, unfortunately. So they're probably going to need both guard spots. I think you, you probably re-sign Jonah Jackson. You bring him back. You have the financial ability to do that, so I don't see why. Just don't. Uh, and then draft maybe a Christian Mahogany in the second round, I think would be really fun. Hexa fun. Keeps your offensive line really strong. Green Bay Packers, I got right guard, safety, and corner as the top needs there. So... Royce Freeman's currently probably slated to be uh, uh, the right guard there with John Runyon as a free agent. They could go out because it's not like the Packers got money currently this free agency. Uh, they are currently $17 million above the cap, but that means they're probably going to sign some budget deals. Uh, they had to restructure a lot to get there. But Jack Driscoll, a guy who has had his ups and his downs as a reserve, but... You could bring him in just as some good depth there at the guard position. Uh, and honestly, a guy that ha has tackle flexibility as well. Uh, I think one of the better backups in the NFL. And then maybe in the second round, where you have two picks anyway, draft a Dominic Pooney, a guy that also has tackle versatility, possibly center versatility, but you're looking at him as a probably a guard in the NFL. So I think I think honestly, Pooney could be probably a uh, a guy that I feel like I probably should push up higher on my board just because of the potential versatility with him. Uh, and safety, Anthony Johnson's the only like what the only safety I think they have under contract, or at least the only one of like name worthy. But they could go out, they could spend to get Xavier uh, McKinney. I think that would that would be a huge get. McKinney played really well this past season for the Giants and is due to a pretty a good contract. You could probably get him at like maybe like a five year 30 million, five year 20. Nah, 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 nah. He could be asking more than that. Let's say five year 40 million. Mm, I don't know. This is why I don't do contracts. This is why I let the experts project that type of stuff. But uh, Cameron Kitchens, also someone that will be uh, allowed or allowed available in the second round that they could probably take a swing on there at the safety position. But I've been saying corner is kind of a, uh, a big need for this team as Jair Alexander is their top guy there, which hey, that's a gr hell of a top guy to have. But uh, opposite of him, it's like Eric Stokes can't get healthy. Uh, Karen Valentine was kind of a late late day three guy who performed well as rookie year which is a, that's great but you want to grab more depth more competition jair alexander's had his fair share of uh injuries year to year so i think re-signing Keyshawn nixon is kind of a first big step because it gets you a guy that at least played the slot quite a bit for the team last season and he's your best return man so but i think this is why cooper DeGene makes so much sense Someone that could play outside. He could play in the slot. And fun fact, he could probably play safety too. I mean, I'd probably want to play him on the outside. That's why I list, like, re-signed Keyshawn Nixon. But it's like Jair Alexander has flexibility to play in the slot. Like, it, it gives you just more versatility in that, in that defense. All right, let's keep this sucker rolling with the Minnesota Vikings. I got edge, corner, and quarterback as their top needy areas. So edge, obviously, like Daniel Hunter. You got DJ Wonham. You got Marcus Davenport, all free agents. Their top edge is Pat Jones, for goodness sake. So, yeah, probably want to re-sign Daniel Hunter. 
Currently looking at Minnesota's cap space, they're at 41 million available to them. So you could pay Daniel Hunter. Uh, and then obviously drafting Dallas Turner in the first would be nice. But it really that kind of depends on what's going on at quarterback. Because their top quarterback on the roster is like Jaron Hall. <laughs> could be Nick Mullins, but it's Jaron Hall. Uh, they could re-sign Kirk Cousins, which I think is largely in play. I mean, that would eat a fat stack, that $41 million, but I think it's well worth it. And then you could maybe draft like a J.J. McCarthy. You don't have to give up future draft capital, move up to get like a Jaden Daniels. You can get J.J. McCarthy, who you feel has just as good, if not better, tools that just maybe needs a year or two of seasoning. But uh, corner, corner, they have Byron Murphy. He's got inside-outside versatility, but they need more players there. You saw good things from Makai Blackman. But they could go out and get a Xavier Howard, who played really well under Brian Flores. Uh, they could draft the big body, Kyrie Jackson, in the fourth round. Oh, hmm. be a sexy pick. Might not even be available in the fourth round. You could probably even go in the third, honestly. All right, moving to the NFC South. We're going to go to the Falcons. Quarterback's obviously the biggest need there. Wide receiver and edge. So I got Tyler, uh, Taylor, Tyler, Taylor. I always want to call him Tyler. I don't know why. Taylor Heineke as the top quarterback there. Yet yeah, don't at me about Desmond Ritter. Uh, I suggest just trade for Justin Fields. That's just me. Or I think Drake May, report is they really like Drake May, which means they're probably going to have to trade up significantly to get him. Because there's no assurance that he'll even be available after two. That's kind of the interesting fact. But you don't know exactly who the commanders, maybe the commanders fancy Jaden Daniels a bit more. I don't know. We'll find out. But I listed uh, Drake May here, but you can honestly put in Jaden Daniels as well. A uh, wide receiver, it's literally Drake, London, and nobody else. They could go out and get a big body, long field threat in Gabe Davis. Uh, they could also get a better version of that, at least what you're hoping, in Roma Dunze in the first round. And then obviously Edge, it's Lorenzo Carter is probably their best player currently. Arnold Ebiketti kind of needs to step up. So they could go out in free agency and get like a Josh Uchi, who uh, really hasn't done more than a dpr role but i think he is capable of much more he's got some versatility in that in the uh linebacker core as well or they could draft like a dallas turner i think would be a really good fit panthers we got wide receiver interior offensive line and edge so i got adam thielen as the top wide receiver there mingo needs to get better I say go out and try to sign Michael Pittman. You just throw money at the position. Get better at wide receiver. Uh, and also draft wide receiver in the second round with that first pick. Could be Ladd McConkey. It could be Keon Coleman. It could be uh, Troy Franklin, A.D. Mitchell. I don't care. Take Get a wide receiver with that pick. And then uh, with guard, man, like, or even center, like, because it's not like Bozeman had a great year. Corbett was came back late because of injury, wasn't fully healthy, and then got beat up again. That's the thing. Listen to him as the best, their best interior player is kind of. I don't know, man. Is he gonna be the same player coming off injury? I got question marks. So I think they should they should make a splash. Go get like a Robert Hunt. Come in there, man. I mean, don't what what are you gonna try to expect like uh Cade Mays and Chandler Zavala are going to take that next step. Uh, I want, I, I want, bet my butt on that. Go ahead and go out and get some real talent. Uh, also, I got Gate T uh, Leviston, uh, Leviston as a fun get in maybe like the fifth, sixth round. Uh, a guy that kind of, that's been playing tackle for Kansas State, but probably identifies better as a guard in the NFL. And then obviously Edge. DJ Johnson's the top guy on the roster, which is a big problem. He was a reach in the third round. I'm not expecting much from him. Tag Brian Burns, for goodness sake. Even if you don't plan on keeping him, tag and trade him. Come on. Uh, so jo Jonah Ellis could be a real option at the beginning of that third round for the Panthers. Going to the New Orleans Saints. 
This is a team that has been doing restructure after restructure after restructure. They're trying to get this sucker done. Currently, they are sitting at just under 30 million over the cap. So they still got a little ways to go, but they're they're slowly but surely getting there. I got tackle, edge, and tight end as their top spots of need. Obviously, the stuff going on with Ryan Ramchak, his knee, the what is his NFL future look has kind of muddied up the waters. If they got money, then man, I think try to spend it on like a Trent Brown or a Jermaine Luminor to get some just some form of consistency at that tackle position and then draft tackle in the first round with like a jc latham then i think that's good to get uh when it comes to edge and tackle at that point it's like you've probably spent all your money <laughs> just trying to get a replacement tackle there so you're probably gonna have to address it in the draft luckily carl granderson has shown to be a really good player there for the saints maybe they could snag a uh, uh marshawn Nealand there in the second uh, to pair him up with uh, or be that heir apparent to like Cameron Jordan. And then Jawan Johnson, you can always feel like you probably upgrade from him and Foster Monroe and get someone with a little bit more spice in there, which would be Brock Bowers, but you'd have to spend a first round pick on it. And it, would he be more valuable than what tackle means to you? You kind of got to ask yourself that question if you are the Saints. Moving on to the Buccaneers, as I got... Left guard, wide receiver, and linebacker is their top needs. Left guard, Nick Leverett. Leverett? Leverett. There we go. That's the name. Uh, who's a solid backup, I would say that. Uh, so I think they could address the position in free agency. They have $48 million available to them in cap space. Dalton Reisner, come in, be an immediate starter there, give them some consistency uh, if he's not retained there by the – Vikings? Yeah, yeah, he went to the Vikings. Uh, then uh, Troy Fatanu could be an interesting option there at the back end of the first round. Wide receiver with Mike Evans as a potential free agent. You have Chris Godwin and honestly Troy Palmer, who kind of emerges as a decent slot for that team. Uh, I would say re-sign Mike Evans if you can. But if you can't, then you're probably looking at like a Keon Coleman. That's the type of receiver you're probably looking for to be like a replacement there for Mike Evans. So we'll see. We'll see what the what free agency has in store for us. And then you got Servassier, Denise, Dennis. Uh, there is your top linebacker. That's why you got to re-sign Levante David. He wants to be a buck for life, so let him. And then maybe in the second round, you could draft like a Peyton Wilson, who's just going to test out phenomenally. And just he just reeks of... Oh, me just good linebacker. He is just good linebacker. Going to the NFC West. We're going to start with the Cardinals here. They got wide receiver, edge, and corner as their top spots of need. Michael Wilson being their top wide receiver there. Go out and make a play for Michael Pittman if he makes free agency. Just see, see what the price is. Worst case scenario, you're probably drafting Marvin Harrison Jr. or maybe... Malik neighbors there in the first round, I would say. And then edge, Zayvon Collins, a guy that they've kind of converted from off-ball linebacker to more of an edge uh, role. You could def and you could argue that like Gardeck was probably the better actual edge player during the course of the season. And I mean, the unfortunate thing was like BJ Rolari didn't really like he was more of just a passing down player. So, like, they, they obviously want to bring in more talent and competition here. So, they could go out and give Chase Young a one-year deal. Prove it. They could go out and get a Darius Robinson at the back end of the first round and just get a versatile piece along that defensive line. And then corner. Again, this is a team that I feel like, hey, go out and just try to break the bank. Garrett Williams is probably your top corner heading into 2024. Jalen Johnson, man. If they don't tag him, go out and drop a pretty penny. Like, hey, if you're going to be outbid, then, hey, make sure that if you get outbid, that they're paying a hell of a lot. Uh, they could also get maybe Kool-Aid at the back end of the first or early second round. So that's definitely an option for the 
Cardinals right there. The uh, 49ers, I got offensive tackle, offensive guard, and corner as their top needs. Obviously, uh, you look more at right tackle with Colt McKivitts being the top guy at the position. Trent Williams, again, he's up there in age. But I guess mainly I should put just right tackle here. But still, you're probably wanting to get like a feel of who's the heir apparent for Trent Williams. But you first need an immediate replacement there for Colt McKivitts. Colton McKivitts. So they could bring in someone that they're familiar with in George Fant. Played really well under Bobby Sloak this past year. Maybe you bring him in uh, to your uh, bring him to your offense line to compete for that right tackle spot. Jordan Morgan seems like a good get there at the back end of the first round. But you could also say maybe a Graham Barton back end of the first round where he can be uh, he could play center, he could play guard, and shoot, he can maybe even play tackle. Remember, he's been a left tackle for the last three years. He was recruited as a guard, played center his freshman season. So, hey, we got some possibilities. We got some options there. But again, guard's kind of a big, big spot as Aaron Banks is kind of the probably the best player come back next season. Uh, Spencer Burford had his ups and downs this year. And I think Lucian is only on a one year deal. So they can bring in like a John Simpson as a free agent. Uh, they're a guard. Uh, this is a team that is turning into more power concepts, not the Shanahan scheme you remember from a couple of years ago. Uh, at corner, you got Javarius Ward. You got Diamondor Lenoir, but you could probably upgrade that. Uh, he's a good depth piece. You probably want at least a little more competition there for the cornerback two spot than, was it, Ombre, uh Thomas? No, I can't even remember. Former Michigan corner. But uh, they could go out and maybe get C.J. Henderson. Remember, the Niners don't exactly have a ton of money to spend. Is there only six million above the cap? So they're gonna be look. They're gonna be bargain shopping. Maybe they could get one for C.J. Henderson, uh, a guy that has a lot of ability. Man, is just he's kind of looking for that. You're looking for that breakout year. I think Renardo Green would be a good get in the second round. You're a team like the Niners, so ooh, look out for that. Going to the Seattle Seahawks, I got interior offensive line. Uh, you got tight end and linebackers, the biggest needs here. Uh, Anthony Bradford looks like to be the biggest in, or the, the best name when it comes to the interior players. Uh, I, I would say, hey, go out and re-sign Damian Lewis. Currently, Seattle has $16 million in cap space. You would like that number to be better. We'll see. Uh, the, there are some contracts they could definitely move on from, but uh, if they don't re-sign like a Damian Lewis, I know, man, Troy Fontenu has been a guy mocked to them a lot at 16. I would like it better if they traded back. Traded back and got Fontenu because I don't like him as a top 20 type of pick, but I, he's an easier pill to swallow there at the back end of the first round. I don't know. We'll see what happens there. Uh, tight end. Will Disley's the only guy on the roster as you have uh, Kobe Parkinson and Noah Fant hidden free agency. So maybe they bring in a Mike Gesicki. Ooh, maybe they do. Or do they draft Ben Sennett in the uh, third round? I think that's an option as well. Uh, but Gesicki is a good value option. And then uh, the only linebacker currently on roster is Nick Bellor, who's more of a special teamer. Patrick Queen, man, if... Mike McDonald wants to bring in his guy. Patrick Queen kind of is his guy. It, it, it's a guy that has broken out the last couple of years under him. So uh, it, the thing is, he's going to cost a lot, probably. Uh, they can also grab a guy like uh, Eddie Fon uh Foshino. Oh, man, I don't have the pronunciation in front of me. I'm just going to call. I'm just going to say Eddie Fon. But a uh, uh, big fan, a little undersized, but he knows how to get nimble between the tackles. Very good tackler, shown to be very savvy in coverage. Like he's just a solid linebacker. Could even work his way into immediate starter there. But uh, I think he could be a good option in the third round. We're going to close this off with the Rams. As I got interior offensive line, 
safety and corner as their biggest needs. Steve Avila had a really good year, but they are probably looking at that other guard spot, which, hey, just re-sign Kevin Dotson. Just do it. Just do it. Rams, they currently got 48 million cap space. You got the money. Resign them. Uh, however, at center, if they don't bring back, was it Coleman Shelton? Shelton Coleman. Hmm. But they could probably draft like a Tanner Bordellini on midday three. Uh, like other centers that will probably be there. Brian Hudson from Louisville. Uh, even maybe a Hunter Norzad out of Penn State. Would be a good get. Uh, safety. Russ East is the top player. Listen, from every projection I've seen, Jordan Fuller's not going to cost a lot of money. He's a good safety. Just re-sign him. And then if you still want to address the position, you could draft like a Tyler Newbin in the second round, potentially. I think that could be a good get there. But I think corner should be kind of one of the places they look want to look to add. Kobe Durant is kind of the uh, top guy there, though he kind of lost his slot job to Quinnen Lake, who's got safety versatility. Uh, so, like, at least Durant still has a role there, you know? But bring back Witherspoon, who played really well this past season, and then draft like a Nate Wiggins in the first round. There's a... Good shot. You're going to get a the corners are going to fall down the board and you're going to have a good pick between some of the top corners. So let's go ahead and do that. But uh, that's it for the video. Go ahead. Do that. YouTube theater as always until next time. You be easy, my friends. Later.